Hello and welcome. Today we are going to dive into the Bethesda controversy. Well, if anyone's been around the live streams lately, you know I'm playing Skyrim. I It's been a very long time since I played this game, and it's been one of those games that I'm finding I'm able to dive into again. But there is a new controversy that has rised up with the devs of Skyrim, and that is over Doom Eternal. Doom Eternal was a it was a game. It came out a few years back now. Uh, there was supposed to be a OST, a orchestrated soundtrack for the 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 game, and it was announced at E3 and all these other things. And the the devs were under, or the developers that were working for Bizdesda, um, were under crunch time. They they went through two years of hell to make this game and one in particular was the music person or or the person writing the music and when the ost was announced at e3 he didn't even know that it was a thing let's look into all of this we have survived made other sacrifice in the name of our prosperity so let's start where i pick this up at because i didn't even know this was going on until i saw this tweet from Bizdesda going, what? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Recent posts made by Mick Gordon both mischaracterized and misrepresented the team at ID Software. The development of Doom Eternal, Marty Stratton and Chad Massholder, a Moss Holder, uh, with one-sided and unjust account of an irreparable professional relationship. So irreparable to begin with. They're they're coming out and saying this was not repairable, straight up, from what I get from that. We are aware of the details in the history of the matter and unequivocally support Marty, Chad, and the team at ID Software. We reject the distortion of the truth and selected presentation of incomplete facts. We stand ready with full and complete documented evidence to disclose an in, a, in an appropriate venue as needed. So they're saying this is going to go to a court. This is going to go to a lawsuit from this. The statements posted online have incited harassment and threats of violence against Marty, Chad, and ID software team. No matter what happens, if someone comes forward and actually is a whistleblower or is trying to bring light to a situation that is not fair, not right, it doesn't generally incite harassment. We live in a day and age where Twitter, where YouTube, where everyone has is connected to everyone in an instant. The, the, this type of thing is ridiculous. People that are inciting or creating harassment, disavow, go away. This is not this doesn't make things easier. It doesn't make things better. The most you can do is just talk about the scenario and say, hey, listen, what has happened here is unfair and maybe you should fix it. Uh, any threats or harassment directed towards members of our team will be met with swift and appropriate action to protect the health and safety. So, aka, they're going to block them, like generally you do. We remain incredibly proud of ID's previous collaborations with Mick Gordon and ask that uh, fans refrain from reaching conclusions based on his account and, more importantly, from attacking any of the individuals mentioned on either side, including Marty, Chad, or Mick. So, where does this start? I didn't even know that this was a situation going on. I saw this pop up. I saw a bunch of people retweeting it. Uh, namely, I see Jack Septicai responding to it. So I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, there's something more here. Uh, Jack coming out with Mick and some pretty damning evidence and tons of receipts. This doesn't disprove any of it. Marty threw stones first. Mick even told people not to harass anyone. Something he wasn't afforded. A hundred percent. So what happened here is Marty, the executive producer for ID Software, puts up this entire letter three years ago now over the doom eternal ost open letter and this was something that was supposed to come out in um in e3 it was supposed to be sold resold with uh mick gordon's name attached but they never talked to the guy they never set it up they just 
pulled the rug out from underneath the guy from everything I've read here. Uh, I'm not going to read this entire thing because a lot of it has been disproven by everything that Mick has put up. I'm not even going to go through Mick's stuff. I'm going to show it here because this is absolutely ridiculous. Like this, this is a large document in itself, uh, talking about the pattern of the project, how uncertainty and risk, uh, at one point they delayed the pro uh, the project by about six months and continued. But if you go down into the comments of this, you can see this thread has been locked and it's only been locked recently. It sat up there open for the world for three years, 10 days ago, while this was a effing lie. 10 days ago. A lot of delete going on right now. It's been a chuckle over the deleted comments. So people archive this. There is a lot of deleted comments here and a lot of shade was thrown at the, the music composer. And what did, what did the, what prompted all of this? November 9th. So 10 days ago, 10 days ago, exactly the time where people started commenting on that post, my full statement regarding Doom Eternal. So it took them three years to put this together. I got to say, this is one of the biggest, well-documented things I have ever seen for a statement of facts. This, the way it's laid out, would go into a court of law and the court of law would be like, okay, yeah, let's, 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 let's go. Like this is a table of contents. That's how big this is. I have never seen a document uh, this big to disprove what's going on in a situation that is a workplace dispute like this. This is absolutely insanity. It goes on to read that Mick went months without being paid at one point it was nine months at another point it was 11 months before he got any pay he's a dad he's raising a family he is not getting paid constantly from this project on top of that his deadlines were he had to uh, produce two scores or two level scores without seeing the levels in full detail done or anything like that just based off what they want he had to do two of those a month on top of that, he had to redo them if they were rejected in that same time. So it was absolutely ridiculous amount of stuff. He at one point went to them and said, listen, what you are asking me here to do is almost impossible. I can do it, but I'm going to be spending thousands of hours at my computer. I'm going to be sitting there. I'm, he ended up sleeping in his studio, being away from his family all day the time it's absolutely insanity to think this is where it went to so other factors that also upset the early pace contract delay a surprise two week all hands on deck marketing interruption took six weeks instead of two communication was slow like just a few of the things and he's got emails he's showing the receipts he's redacted the the important stuff from it so it, it keeps with any ndas the guy's got to deal with it's absolutely ridiculous. Also, at one point, ID Software offered this guy six figures to let it go and to have his name tarnished by this Reddit post. So, three years later, he finally is able to come out and come out of the shell and able to actually respond to everything because literally he's placed it, had to place it all together. Now. Let's go back to this thing saying the statements posted online. Uh, oh, sorry. We are aware of the details and the history of the matter and unequivocally support them. Uh, and, and they're, they're telling you not to take his account into a, into the facts because he's showing it from a different light. He's showing this from his own personal perspective. It would be up to a court of law to figure out where this is. And I got to say, this is going to end up in front of the courts. This is going to be a massive, a massive lawsuit against Bethesda. And it's very unfortunate. I got to say, I'm still going to be playing Skyrim because I really enjoy the game. I know a lot of people poured their heart and soul into that. That doesn't it, it, that does not necessarily mean Bethesda is uh, free and clear of all of this because in all honesty, what they have done here to this producer, they've, they've sullied his name, they've drugged him through the mud, and then refused to pay him for months at a time. 
And now they want him to shut up and be quiet and keep his head in the dirt, like an ostrich hiding their head under the dirt and not say a word about it. No, I think he's doing the right thing here and coming out and exposing this because the sunlight will set him free. And this is something that needs to be done. Like this is thousands of words long. This is absolutely insanity how i'm still scrolling i'm only halfway through the document this th this document is insane i've read most of it but it's it's very telling if you guys want i will link this in a in a pinned comment down underneath this video go read this and you will sit there and go wow because this is absolute insanity Bizdeza, you can do much better. I think what you've done here is absolute scum of the earth. And this is what's going on with developers in a lot of games nowadays. And this is not right. So hopefully, hopefully the course will be set better for a lot of people. Anyway, guys, I'm your proud Canadian Phoenix Cinder Shadow signing off here. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you all next time very soon.